Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or whatever it is on your time, and welcome to the stream. Yippee! Hi, Otis. Congratulations on cleaning your plastic chair. I hope it's comfortable. You know something that I keep forgetting to do, but it's it, it annoys me. Let's change to the break screen real fast. I'm not gonna take a break, but I need you to see something. I keep forgetting to add the chair to this screen. <laughs> you know what? Why don't we add it right now? Since we're here and I remember, right? Because I will forget if I don't do it right now. Wait, where is it? I, I pasted it. Oh, there it is. And then we put under this. There we go. It's there now. <laughs> the chair exists. Isn't that amazing? There, it, that's something so simple, but I keep forgetting to do it. <laughs> uh, I hope you're having a good day today, Otis. Uh, my day's been going pretty well. For a second, the chair sat upon me! Yeah. It happens to the best of us. Uh, I went this morning to my classes. And I had a very productive day there. Oh, for those who don't know, I, I'm doing uh, sewing classes, you know, making clothes and stuff. And my... I passed my first test today. And basically the test was to make... It, we had like a little square of cloth. And we were supposed to like do lines. And they needed to be as straight as possible. And then, after we're done, we would do the same lines, but across. So it would be like a cross pattern. Uh, let me get the picture for you. We're gonna get the picture from the drawing that I made today, because we can... That's the one I have on hand right now. Oh my god, I forgot how big this picture is. <laughs> Well, well, basically, it was- it's this thing over here. This thing is the thing I made. Uh, this thing in the middle is the teacher put that in there. I don't know why. I think that's to symbolize you did it. I don't know. She just grabbed the- 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 Like a- a pen and marked it down. But the, I made this thing. It's not like com like the the corners are like cut off because that's what I did to edit the image. I cut it out of an actual picture to use it in this drawing, but it lo it looks more straight in person. <laughs> so I made this thing, and now our next assignment is to make like a labyrinth. Uh, how can I explain this? So you see that this one, this cloth, has like. The pattern right, like this, right? It goes line, 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 and then the line across, 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 across. And uh, now instead, we're supposed to like start at the bottom and then go up, and then right, then down, and then left, and then up, right, down, left, and keep doing that until you get to the center of the cloth. And it needs to be completely straight, and that is really hard because i was trying to do and I, because i when i did this i was like this is easy we can anybody can do that just need to keep the, the the thing straight it's so easy and you introduced turning into this <laughs> into suing and then it's over for me but we'll get better the that's why i'm there to learn it's only my, what, day number three of actually using the machine. Because we had... We have four classes, I think. Four? Yes, we had four classes. 
Uh, the first one was just introduction that we didn't even touch the machines. It was just like talking about the course and stuff. The second one, it was the machine introduction. We were given the machine and we would have to do the exercises on paper first. Like with no tread, we would just put the paper through the machine and then we we're gonna get graded by looking at the paper and stuff. And then on the third day, I actually started messing with the machine with Tread and Cloth. And today we had our, our funny test. But it's been fun. Honestly, I know, I, now I know what those ladies are all about. Like they... Now I know like what, what, why all the old ladies like... Like suing, because it's fun. <laughs> I thought it was boring at first. I was like just doing it because I was like, you know what? I got this free course. At the end, I'll get a job on it. So that's fine because I can't. I, I it's like been having some trouble fighting work. But now that I've been doing it, it's actually really fun. Also, hi, Seth. I'll take some water for you, and I guess I will uncross my legs. Hope you're having a good day today. I was talking about my classes. Been use, trying to learn how to use a sewing machine. It's been been a lot of fun. I'm also drinking some coffee. Hmm. But also, today's game, Suikoden 5. But actually, I have a I have a surprise for you. Mm, oh, that's not the screen I wanted to show. <laughs> that's my blue sky. <laughs> This is what I wanted to show. We're gonna be talking about the nominees for the Game Awards because it came out today. And I guess we can do the voting live because I actually have no idea what's it gonna be. So let's mute the game. Wait, let me hide this real fast. And then we're going to have different music. There we go. I love my esteem from Persona 2. Now I can bring the screen back. Oh yeah! I wanna see what it is because I haven't seen yet. I only know that it's happening. So, before we get in, I'm gonna try to guess the nominees for Game of the Year. I'm not gonna do that for every single one of them, because that's gonna suck. I think the nominees are gonna be... Like, for Game of the Year... Uh, Metaphor? Because that's my Game of the Year. Uh... What else came out this year? Uh, the Sun Wukong game? What else? I had this conversation last week, and I already forgot all the games that came out this year. Uh, I was gonna say Elden Ring DLC, but I don't think the DLC will be a Game of the Year contender, because it's a DLC, it's not a game. Uh, <laughs> it would be really funny if Baltro was one of the nominees. How many nominees are there? Five? That's three. So there's two more. Oh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth came out this year. What else? And I call myself a gamer. I don't even... Well, to be fair, I don't really play a lot of recent games. Let's go with these four for now. And then we'll see what the fifth one is. Oh? Hello? Game Awards? Why is it a black screen? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Did they forget to put the game of the year here? <laughs> uh, let me re reload the page. Oh, there- Oh, Astro Ball! Baldro is here! <laughs> the, the Elder Ring DLC is here too! Wait a second, you're not supposed to be here! <laughs> 
you're not a game, you're a DLC! Can't believe this. And I'm blocking, but the last one is Metaphor. But yeah, these are what... I would say Baltro and Elden Ring are the ones I did not expect here. I kind of want to vote for Baltro because, you know... Fun, cool indie game. But also, I actually played Metaphor and I like it a lot. <laughs> so we're gonna vote for Metaphor. <laughs> Download card? Just give me the next category. Best Game Direction. Order for Outstanding Creative Vision and in Innovation in Game Direction and Design. Those are the same games. <laughs> DLCs can be contenders if they have enough content. I guess that's fair. Innovation in game direction. I don't even know what you vote for that, because I never understood this category. I feel like it's usually... Since it's the same ones as the game of the year... Just vote metaphor again, I guess. I don't know if they... There's a lot of innovation in that game. It's basically just the Atlas form formula, but uh, in a fantasy setting. Valtro or Black Myth Wukong? I haven't played either of them. The... I do think Astrobot is really cool, but I also don't think it did anything new. And honestly, I don't want to vote for Final Fantasy VII because I also haven't played it. <laughs> Maybe I should play more games. I'll vote for Metaphor again, because that's the one I played. <laughs> Best narrative. Oh, Infinite Wealth is here. I have... I haven't... I don't know what game this is. Oh, it's... Oh, Hellblade. I was like, what is Senua's Saga? <laughs> the thing is, is because I also haven't played Infinite Wealth. I know it's a funny game, though. Uh, and also, I feel kind of bad giving Metaphor best narrative, because I like the story in that game, but you can literally boil down the story to, uh, don't be racist. <laughs> that's, that's the, that's the, that's the plot of the game. <laughs> Sure, why not? <laughs> Give it to Metaphor. Art Direction. <laughs> They're giving me the same games over and over again! <laughs> I want new things! This game looks pretty though. I have seen this game. Oh my, I feel bad. I want to give it to Metaphor again. That game is really pretty. It's funny because, uh, for Metaphor, I think the game looks really pretty. The only part that doesn't look pretty is the desert at the start of the game. That area looks horrible, and I don't know why they didn't put some extra time on that desert to make it look a little bit better. <laughs> and it's like, that's the first thing people are gonna see. Why are you not putting that much effort in it? I don't know. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> Uh, hello, there were only four games that released this year. Pick one to say things about it, please. I guess so. I guess there wasn't a lot of very big releases this year. At least not that I can think about. Like, they had to put a DLC here. <laughs> to fill in space. I'm gonna give to Metaphor again, who cares? It's my vote. Best score and music? Oh, Stellar Blade is in here. I forgot that Stellar Blade came out this year. Uh... So, as much as I like Metaphor, I will say that compared to the other Atlas' games, the music was kind of lacking. The battle music is a banger, though. I I'll give it that. Oh, wait a second. There's a video that I must show you. Uh, uh, I guess spoilers for the first for the first four uh, party members that you actually got to see it in the demo, so I guess it's not that big of a spoiler. 
put it here. And then move over to the other screen. Shut up, Ed! Can I not move it over here? Isn't that how it works? What if I do this? Oh, there we go. Uh, oh, I need to mute the music. Shut up. Listen to this. <laughs> I love this video so much. See, the music for the battles team is such a banger. Very good video. Very good video, sir. Oh, don't look at that. That's my walkthrough for <laughs> for Suikoden 5. For the stars of destiny. Cheap ringers, my dingus, you can say that. <laughs> but yeah, that song in metaphor, banger. I would say that most of the areas at in the game have very generic fantasy music like things that you would expect from any fantasy game and it doesn't do a lot of mm, there's a few exceptions like there is a there is a i don't even know how to explain it my brain is very small <laughs> i'll just let you know that there are a few places that have good songs but what do I else do I vote though? I will say that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has a lot of bangers, but the problem with that is that most of the songs in this game are just like rearrangements of, of songs from the old game. <laughs> uh, I guess that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be credited, right? Because the, it, they, they still put work into it. You know what? I'll vote for that because I like Final Fantasy music. Next. Hello? Game Awards? I'm assuming that it's slow because a lot of people are <laughs> using it. Let's reload the page. Oh, I thought it was the same category for a second. Best Audio Design. I haven't played any of- Oh, you know what? So I haven't played Astrobot, but I would say this game sounds extremely satisfying to play. So I'm gonna give it to you then. <laughs> From the videos that I watched. <laughs> Best performance. I don't know any of these. I haven't played any of these games. <laughs> I also don't know any of these people. They should at least tell me what character they voiced, so I would get like a little reference. Can I skip the category? Okay, I can. Let's skip this one for now. Innovation and accessibility. Organize software and our hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience. This is a good category, but I feel like a lot of people are not gonna know what you put here. <laughs> because I don't. I think Skeddy played Dragon Age The Veilguard, and she, she said that she liked the game, but she has reservations about it. But this doesn't have anything to do with accessibility. I'll also skip this one because I don't know. Games for impact. I haven't seen any of these games. <laughs> Sorry, if you're here for like the gloopy gamer opinion. Helldivers! Oh, but Final Fantasy XIV has to be best ongoing game. I'm sorry that you guys are here for the gloopy gamer opinion. I think this is just proving that I don't play a lot of games. At least not games that 
are released in this year. <laughs> mm. This category though has to go for Final Fantasy. As much as I enjoy playing Helldivers a lot, I think I'm a little bit biased towards Final Fantasy because I play this game basically every day. Yeah, it's going for Final Fantasy. Don't listen to the haters saying that the latest expansion was bad. It's good. Actually, I have a feeling that most people do like the new expansion. It's just that the people that don't like it are very loud about it. <laughs> but Helldiver is also pretty good. A little bit too baby, though. Hello? <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a, oh, there's a little bar filling up here. Baldur's Gate 3! Best community support, recognize the game for outstanding community support, transparency and responsiveness, including of inclusive of social media activity and game updates slash patches. Uh this is a hard one. Also, I didn't even realize that this was Fortnite. I, I was like, just saw this and I didn't recognize it and I it got deleted from my brains. Like there was nothing in the in this in this spot until I read Fortnite. <laughs> Uh, th this is actually a hard category, because Baldur's Gate 3, Larian is great with community support. They just recently released the, the, well, not that recent, it's been like, what, a month that they released the mod tools for the game? And it's been pretty nice for the modding community. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV, I feel like the... They're not as responsive as Larian, I would say. It's funny because it says Square Enix down here. It should. It <laughs> Square Enix is very big. <laughs> they have like other people there that are working because what is what is the Final Fantasy XIV thing called again? It's like create creator team three. <laughs> That's something like that. Oh, creation unit, I think? I don't remember. Anyways. I feel like they are also very responsive. The game also gets constantly updated. But they are also a Japanese a company. So they usually don't interact with the players like that often. But they do respond to problems that the community is having. So for example, Recently, with uh, Dawn Trail, which is the new expansion, they had uh, a graphical update, and they changed how a lot of characters looked. So, Yoshi P said, if you don't like how your character looks now, let us know. Send feedback, we'll fix it. And they also give you, like, a free Fantasia, and a Fantasia in the game is, like, uh... I think it's ten dollars, and you can change your character appearance, like everything, race and stuff. And they gave it for free when the expansion came out. Some people complained that their character didn't look right. They tried using the free Fantasia, couldn't get the same result. So in the latest patch that came out uh, a week ago, they released a second. Oh, it's funny that I started playing Final Fantasy song when I started talking about Final Fantasy. In the latest patch, they again changed, uh, they tweaked how the characters looked again, based on feedback of the community, and gave people another free Fantasia in case they again didn't like how their character look. And it's like, wow, that's pretty fun. I, I appreciate it, because they couldn't just not give you any and nothing for free like oh you don't like how your character looks now too bad pay us ten dollars <laughs> mm. in hell divers we don't so that's the problem there's a weird thing with hell divers because i feel like arrowhead does listen to the gamers but i feel like they miss a lot because uh, uh, for the longest time, people were like screaming for Arrowhead to rebalance the weapons because everything felt weak, it, the game wasn't fun to play, 
yada yada. I, I still thought it was fun, but I did feel like a lot of the weapons didn't do anything. So it's like, what is the purpose of this weapon if I shoot bug and bug don't die? Uh, and it took them a while to actually start buffing the weapons. And I think the reason and the reasoning that they gave is that they expecting people to be playing Helldivers 2 like people played Helldivers 1, which is relying more on stratagems and stuff like that. Which I guess that's fair, because that was the community they made the game for in the first place. But I feel like Helldivers 2 outgrew that community by a lot. <laughs> so... They kind of changed it back. Now they buffed all the weapons. So I would say that is good community support. Still gonna give it to Final Fantasy though. <laughs> Hey, Rob Nidus, how are you doing today? Uh, we're currently talking about uh, the Game Awards. But we're gonna be playing Suikoden 5 right after this. Oh, this is actually longer than I expected. Should I just change the category to just chatting? Let me change it to just chatting real fast. I just realized that we have like 20 more categories to vote for. <laughs> I don't want people to come here and be like, where is this, where is this Suikoden 5? I'll change it back to Suikoden 5 after we're done. Mm. Best indie, indie game. I heard Animal L, Baltro, and, uh, and UFO 15 are all really good. I haven't heard anything about these two games though. I think I saw a trailer for Neva, if that's how you pronounce it, but that's it. Uh, hmm, I guess I could give it to Baltro because you know, that's that's the one that people talk about. I haven't played any of these though. I, I I'm going all based on me watching other people have fun with the game. <laughs> Let's go for Baltro. I think they deserve it. Wait. Oh, by a new independent studio. I was confused because I was like, this is basic. That not that the same thing? Oh, Pacific Drive is here. And Men or Lords. Oh, this is... Well, I don't know anything about the, the Plucky Squire. But I've heard of all these four games. And they all, like, exploded. I don't know which one I will vote for, though. Mmm, I guess we can always give it to Baltro at the end of the day, right? <laughs> Best mobile game. <laughs> I don't play mobile games. Wait, Zenland Zone Zero is a mobile game? I actually didn't know about that. I thought it was like a computer game. Can, it, can a, a, a mobile game... Can a phone even play that game? I feel like it you would have to put like the graphics very low. Hmm. Baltro also came out on mobile. Also, didn't this Pokemon trading card game came out like last month? <laughs> They're already here. Uh, and then there's Watering Waves, which I heard about when it came out, and then people just stopped talking about it. <laughs> And I don't even know what AFK Journey is. I guess at, at the end of the day, we always got Baltro back. Best VR slash AR experience. Haven't played any of these games. I actually wouldn't even know what to vote here, so we're gonna skip this one. Best action game? Ooh, there we go. This is the Helldivers category right here. Because I heard... Black Myth Wukong is really good. Have not played it though. Call of Duty? Boo! Stellar Blade I also heard is pretty good. I don't have a PS5 though. I also heard that this game is really good as well, but I'm not really a Warhammer fan. So let's give it to Helldivers. Best action slash adventure. Hmm... 
Oh, they have the Zelda game in here. We're gonna give it to the Zelda game because I think it's really cute. Best RPG. Oh, Dragon's Dogma is here. I honestly forgot that Dragon's Dogma 2 came out this year. I still gotta beat it though. I actually got really close to beating it. And then my computer exploded. And then I got a new computer and I was like, I now can play the game at 60 FPS. So I deleted my save and I started over. <laughs> but I've been having fun with it. It's a fun game. It honestly... I still think Dragon's Dogma 1 is better. But I feel like what Dragon's Dogma 2 is missing is like the Dark Arisen treatment. Because I think it's not... it's better than base uh, Dragon's Dogma, but it's not better than Dark Arisen. Anyways. It's going for it to metaphor, of course, because <laughs> that's the game I played and I really like. <laughs> Thank you, metaphor, for being a good game. Thank you for not being Persona 5, because I hate Persona 5. Wow, the page is really taking a while to load. You guys can see their orange bar up here, right? It's 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 going. It's it's trying its best. It'll be done one day. Best fuck. Hmm? What happened to the music? Where is it? Oh. It's just that it starts very quietly. <laughs> oh, for a second I was like, do they have like a Powerpuff Girls game? But no, it's multiverses. Well... I gotta give it to Sparking Zero, right? That's the only one that I played and I love this game. Haven't played Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. Is this even a fighting game? I guess so. This is just a collection of old games. Multiverses is like barely a fighting game. And I'm not really a Tekken fan, so... Let's go Sparking Zero. I love Goku. I don't actually. Best family game. This is... Oh, for, <laughs> it's funny because all of these... I think this is also a Switch game. All of these but Astro Bot. It's like a Nintendo Switch game. <laughs> Or is Plucky the, uh, the Plucky Squire in, on the PS4 as well? I don't remember. Because I watch... I know of this game because I watched uh, in the Nintendo Direct. That's where I know it from. I actually don't know anything about the new Mario Party. I actually forgot that there was a new one. Eh... Uh... I'll give it to Astrobot because I like him. He's a funny little robot dude. Best sin slash strategy game. <gasps> Unicorn Overlord! I forgot that this came out this year! Let's go! I'm currently playing this game and it's good! <laughs> we don't even need to see the other ones. Best sports slash racing? Skip. Get this thing out of here. Best multiplayer? Helldivers. I already explained it why. <laughs> Best adaptation? <clears throat> uh, I heard that Arcane is really good. I watched one episode and I didn't feel it, but I guess it's because I hate League of Legends. But it is interesting though. It's just not something that I will go out of my way to watch it. Like, I watched one episode because one of my friends were watching it. I actually really like the Fallout series. I will say though, you kinda have to turn your... not turn your brain off, that's not a good thing to say. But you have to assume that they're not going to respect the original... <laughs> the... the source... Ah, I should... I guess not even respect. Because they do a lot of things that are cool, but they also do a lot of things that I don't like. 
because I'm a OG Fallout fan. I, I actually, my favorite Fallout is Fallout 2. <laughs> I even stream it some time ago, but I stopped because I was getting annoyed at chat. Regardless, the... They did a lot of things that, on, honestly, they could have done the same story, but in a different area of the wasteland, and it would have been perfect. But the... I don't know why they decided to make in like a pre-established place in the lore. It looked, it's, it looked more like they were like, Oh, remember this place in Fallout 1 and 2? This is what they're doing now. Here's Shady Sands. And I was like, you don't need to do that. You can just do your own thing. And it, it would have been good. Because I do like the show. It just didn't need to have stuff from the older games. Just make your own thing. <laughs> I think the biggest thing to remember as a Fallout fan is that it's a huge world with endless stories to tell. Exactly! I feel like if they just did their own thing, it would have been so much better. Like, they didn't even need to change the script that much, because it doesn't really rely on the old stuff. I feel like every time something from the old games shows up, it's just to be like, Haha, remember about this, gamers? And that's it. It doesn't really add much to the narrative. Well, unless for shock value. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but... Shady, Sh Shady Sands does show up. Like, the, the, the place. And it doesn't... It, 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 they did something to it that I did not like. It could have been just a, a, a different city. And it would have been so much better. But they decided to pick Shady Sands for that. Easter eggs, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyways, I still enjoyed it, though. I guess that's a good thing, because I feel like if it was just bad, I would have brushed it off and be like, okay, I'm not gonna watch this. But it gets so close to being perfect, and it makes me upset. But I'm still very excited for season two. Like, I'm having a good time watching it. It's just that... I, I keep it talk I keep talking in circles. <laughs> you already know what I think about it. Uh I watched one episode of Knuckles. It was funny, I guess, but I didn't watch the movies, so I stopped because I wanted Hello? <laughs> I can't believe Knuckles killed the stream. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to assume that you guys heard everything I had to say about Fallout. Moving over to Knuckles. I was saying that I watched one episode of Knuckles. It was okay, I guess, but I wasn't very invested because I... I didn't watch the Sonic movies, but I want to though. Uh, I, I actually only started to get excited about the Sonic movies when Shadow the Hedgehog was in the picture. Because who doesn't love Shadow the Hedgehog? <laughs> so, I'm going to watch the Sonic movies with my friends. Maybe we're gonna watch Knuckles, but probably not. Uh, I heard that the Yakuza series is really bad. That they actually change a lot of stuff and add a lot of characters. And the characters don't look or act like the characters in the game. And they don't tell you what character is is what. Like, they don't tell you their names until somebody says it. Because, so I haven't watched myself, but a, a trusted friend uh, watched Yakuza. And he told me the, these things. So, if, friend, if you're watching this and you're wrong, that's on you. <laughs> but something that I was actually expecting from the series, you know in the Yakuza games, when a character shows up and then they go boom, boom, and then their name appears on screen? 
I feel like they could do that in the series and it would have been perfect because, yeah, that's what the Yakuza, fa Yakuza fans are used to it. And that would be a very good way to tell you which, what, which character is which because apparently you can't tell because they, they look different and they also don't act like them. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I, I don't think I, I don't think I would recommend <laughs> like a dragon yakuza to anybody. And uh, I didn't even know they had a Tomb Raider series. <laughs> Is it any good? Did anybody in chat watch it? Because I I have no idea. I guess it's animated because of the the way that this looks. Like it's not live action. Which is funny because. Not- didn't expect to see any Lara Croft stuff anytime soon. When did the last game came out? 2017? Like, around there? You didn't know Knuckles was a series or your Yakuza? Uh, the Yakuza one, I knew it was going to be a thing. I didn't know it was going to be that bad. <laughs> uh, and the only reason I know that Knuckles is a thing is because one of my friends suggested us to watch one episode, which we did. And it's okay, like it's... I just wasn't invested, I guess. <laughs> but I guess if you really like the Sonic movies, I guess you can watch it, because... The animation looks good, the, the CGI and stuff. I think sometimes when they would have, like, the lightning effect... Uh, <laughs> in some characters it looked kinda bad. But the models look pretty good, because I'm assuming they're just reusing the movie models. <laughs> and there's so many Lara Crofts. Yeah, that's, I didn't even know this one was real. Anyways, I'll give it to Fallout, because... I think Arcane is also good from what I've heard. Didn't watch it though. Fallout, I'm actually invested in it, so... Most anticipated game. Ooh, this is a hard one for me because of two games: Death Stranding 2 and Monster Hunter Wilds. I honestly not excited for any of these because I haven't played the other Ghost of Tsushima game. That's the sequel, right? For Ghost of Tsushima. Uh. I honestly do not care about GTA 4, oh, 5, 6, but this is probably gonna win because I know that I, the majority of people are excited about this one. <laughs> honestly, I feel like this is not even gonna be a contest. Like, I don't like GTA, but I think the GTA is gonna win. <laughs> uh, I heard that the Metroid Prime games are really good, I'm just not, never played a Metroid game. I played the one on the SNES, like, I want to say almost, like, 15 years ago. <laughs> and I never beat it, but it was fun. But it's not one of the Metroid Primes, because Prime is the first-person shooter ones, right? Now, Monster Hunter Wilds, very excited about it. Play the demo. I just wish... When the game comes out, it's better optimized, because the game runs really bad. <laughs> but it's- it's a- it was a beta, so... The world beta also ran really bad, and when the game came out, it was better. So I'm assuming it's going to be the case with Wilds. And as you guys know, I am a Monster Hunter world hater. I still play the game a lot, though, so... <laughs> I feel like... If Wild- the problem that I had with World is that... I feel like the game would stop you from having fun with friends at every single turn. Like, oh, you can't join this quest because your friend is watching a cutscene. Oh, sorry, you're blocked off because of your uh, your ink. You, you need to progress through the story. Why did they make it story tied in the first place anyways? <laughs> because... Uh, the reason why I like Monster Hunter is because it's something that I can pick up, beat up a big monster with my friends, 
at any time. Like, it can be like, hey, can we play Monster Hunter? And then we go play Monster Hunter. I don't want to see no story blocking. Like, I don't mind that the story is there. The problem that I mind is that it would stop me from hunting with my friends. And I hated it. <laughs> Hopefully wild sissing like that You the multiplayer was so yeah, exactly because the game was fun I don't see anything wrong with the game itself. It's just very restrictive uh, And I also am not a fan of world's uh, Art direction. I think it looks bad <laughs> Like uh, I guess bad is not the good a uh, good way to put it I guess it looks too realistic for me. <laughs> I guess that would be the, a good way to put it. Because Monster Hunter for me always looked kind of goofy. And I like that it looks goofy. And then it, lo it looks a little bit too human. I'm like, I don't I don't like looking at these guys, these people and being like, You're, you look too real. The, the graphics are too good. I'm, I don't like it. <laughs> Which I guess it could be a weird thing to say. But... I, that's just how I feel. Uh, especially, they brought it back with Iceborne, but in base world, the weapons looked so bad. It was just piece of metal with feathers, piece of metal with scales, piece of metal with a, a, a little bit of skin. Instead of being like the crazy big weapons that people are used to, I don't know what they were thinking. But I guess they heard that people didn't like the way that they did the weapons. So in Iceborne, it's closer to the original Monster Hunter looking weapons, which is good. That's one of the reasons why I like Rise so much more than World. Because in Rise, you can literally ignore the village quests, go straight to multiplayer and just play the game with your friend. I, don't, I think you can even skip the tutorial, <laughs> which is like, great, that's what I want. <laughs> uh, but anyways, Death Stranding 2, I'm also very excited about, because I'm a huge Death Stranding fan. I like Kojima. I would say that Kojima probably sometimes is a weird guy. And I will agree that you don't really need to have big names in a game to tell the narrative. Like, they, they didn't need to have... What is his name again? Daryl from Walking Dead as the as Sam? <laughs> like, he did a really good job, don't get me wrong. But I feel like you don't need to have big names in a game just to sell it. Yeah, Norman Reedus! Yes, that's the man! <laughs> How could I forget? Is Norman Reedus in the Funky Fetus? <laughs> but I really like Death Stranding. Playing Death Stranding was really fun. I like all the climbing mechanics and like how you need to be very creative on how you make your path. And also building the Cairo network was really fun. And then you could see, you could start seeing what other players around you built. And that was such a cool idea because the game is all about uh, feeling isolated. And then as soon as you bring the internet back up, you can see that, oh, everybody was also playing the game alongside me. That's such a cool concept. It's kind of like Dark Souls d does something similarly with the messages on the floor, but I think Death Stranding takes that to the next level and is really cool. The, how you, the game makes you feel makes you feel really alone, and then immediately makes you feel like, look at all these people here with me, even though they're not really here. It's it's so cool. I love it, <laughs> and I hope that Death Stranding two ah. I don't know if they would be able to bring the same feel because I'm assuming that in true society is gonna start building themselves back up so they would need a new team that is not just being isolated but I guess we'll see when we see it I, I think I trust Kojima on this but anyways I think Monster Hunter Wilds should get the thing anyways because I want to play that more <laughs> that's for 
Cora! Anyways, content creator of the... <laughs> Sorry. The, the neuro activation hit me. I don't even watch Pecora. I'm honestly don't even watch Corpos at all. I have a, I guess anti Corpo is not the thing to call myself. I just see people talking about, oh, here's this thing about Hololive. Here's this thing about Visojo, and I was like, who cares? I I stream as a VTuber to you know have fun with my friends, but also. I want to be a rat online. <laughs> I don't care about the corpus. Which, uh, to be fair, they did pave the way for the indies. I wouldn't be here without them. But I don't care about them. Like, <laughs> funny thing, there was like one time, I don't re even remember her name. Like whatever the, the whole life girl that is supposed to be like a rodent of some kind. People kept telling me about her, and I was like, I don't care, I don't watch Corpos, I go to a Corpos stream, and the chat is like a wave of people talking, and then, oh, the video went and I was like, your voice hurts my ears, <laughs> I don't want to watch this. <laughs> I guess there is a couple of cool ones. But I feel like when I'm watching, like, a VTuber, at least for me, the thing that I like about them is being able to interact with them in chat. So, I prefer smaller VTubers. I think you guys already heard me saying this multiple times, but I, I enjoy being small. <laughs> I get it because I'm a tiny rat. <laughs> I don't think, like, I keep saying if I had, like, a hundred people watching me, I would probably stop streaming. Because as soon as the chat becomes, like, unmanageable, like, I can't really talk to people when they come in, then, for me, that would take away the enjoyment of streaming to me. Even if there's, like, one guy in chat, that, uh, that's enough for me. Even if there wasn't anybody, I would be talking to myself. <laughs> I, I would honestly prefer having one guy than a hundred guys, if that makes sense. So, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the content creator of the year. Uh, I know Queso. He's a funny guy, I guess. And I don't know, I... I s the only things that I know about Pecora is they're a friend of mine, Neapolitan, that every time they go live, they post a different Pecora picture, and that's all the the <laughs> that's all that I've seen of Pecora. <laughs> I have no idea who these other guys are, so I get I guess I will skip it. I don't have enough information because I don't really watch any of these people. Best eSport game? They're all bad. Next. I guess Counter-Strike is okay, but I don't like it. Best eSport athlete? I don't know any of these people. I heard about Faker. But I, I, I don't have- I have no idea. This guy's called 33? That's a fun name. This person does not have a good name though. Can you guys see it? I think I need to do this. Is, how is this their real name? I would feel bad if that's their real name because I don't know how to pronounce it. Is is it Z Zimbzik? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> if that's their real name, I'm sorry. If that's the name you gave yourself, give yourself a better name. <laughs> I will skip it because I don't know. Best esports thing? I have no idea. Next. Player's voice. What is this? Oh, is this not open yet? I don't even know what this is. It, well, I guess I guess we'll find out when it's out. I, I get. I think we're done. It says twenty out of twenty nine votes votes cast up there. Oh, I guess it's because I skipped a bunch of them, huh? Oh, that's probably why that it's like that. Anyways, we're done. I voted on 20 things out of 29 things. I think that's pretty good. 
if I do say so myself.